Hey everybody, um, this is Homer White. I am uh, going to share with you how to make an R Markdown document to write up things such as homework assignments or uh, to easily communicate questions or answers you have for other people about our programming. So let's get right to it. In RStudio, you go to File, you want New File. But you're not going to go for an R script. You're going to ask for R Markdown. And then you can give it a title. So maybe you're interested in uh, writing up some homework. Maybe it's the uh, chapter 53 homework or something like that. And uh, if you want, you can say who you are. Uh, I'll say Homer White. And uh, you'll want to make it uh, from a template. It's usually your best choice. So we're going to click template. And uh, there's uh, many, many templates that you could choose. I'm going to go ahead and choose CSC 115 homework HTML. Even if you're not in the 115 class, it's a decent choice. So I click it and say OK. And a new untitled document uh, shows up in my editor pane. I'm going to go ahead, since it's homework perhaps, to, to go ahead and save it. File, Save As. And I'll head to my Submit folder. And I'll say uh, CSC 115 Chapter 53 HW.RMD, however you're supposed to name it so that it can be collected. And you save. And um, we see that the, um, the computer actually ignored our choice for a title or a choice for the author. Let's go ahead and get to that right away. What is this stuff here in the um, top of the document? There's three hyphens, and then there's another three hyphens. Those three hyphens delimit what's called YAML front matter. It gives metadata about the document, such things as the title, author, date when it's produced, and uh, what kind of engine is supposed to produce a finished product from this document. You got to be careful when you edit your YAML front matter. The title appears to be in quotes. And you need to keep those quotes, all right? So. Be careful to keep the quotes there also at your name. I guess I don't need the exclamation point. Uh, you can put your own uh, fixed date inside these quotes, but uh, this particular command is going to give you the exact date at the moment that you produce the finished product. Okay, enough for the uh, YAML front matter. Let's go ahead and make a finished product out of uh, these notes. So notice there's a knit button here, and next to it is a cog that indicates some settings for knitting. I'm going to press the down arrow next to the cog, and let's make sure that preview in winder, win, viewer pane is what you select. That's going to be the most convenient way to get an initial look at the finished product. All right, having done that, you can now press the knit button. And over in the viewer pane, the finished product appears. If you wish, you can uh, pop it up larger by hovering over this little button that says show a new window and then pressing that button. And it'll pop up to the new tab in your browser. What you got on the left is a floating table of contents. As you go down through the document, it shows you where you are, or you could navigate to a particular spot uh, using the table of contents. So that's pretty handy. This is a homework document, and you can see that uh, there's apparently sections. Each problem appears to be its own section and then subsections for the statement of the problem and the solution of the problem. 
so how is all this nice stuff being produced? Let's close this file and head back to uh, our studio. So you'll see that under the YAML front matter is uh, a mixture of some areas that just look like regular text that you might type into a Microsoft Word document with a few funny exceptions like the stars, what are they for? And then there's other areas with a gray background. And those areas look like they have R code inside them, and indeed they do. The gray back down, gray, the gray back down areas are called code chunks. They are delimited by three backticks at the beginning and end of the chunk. Inside of the code chunk is R code. And that R code is going to be run when the document is knit up. Now, right after the initial three back ticks is a pair of, bra of curly braces. And inside the curly brace, inside the curly brace are what we call chunk options. The only chunk option you really, really need for a code chunk is the option R, which says that the code chunk contains R code that will be run by the uh, R interpreter when the document is knit up. So a mixture of text with the white background and code chunks with gray background make up an R markdown document. When the document is knit, the code chunks are run. Any output that they should produce to the console or any graphs that they produce or other output will be placed inside the document when it's knit. So, how should you write up your homework? Well, you'll want to have two hashtags in front of each section, and each section should be a problem. Two hashtags, then a space, that space is very important, and then you know the name or the number of your problem. If you want a subsection, go for three hashtags then a space, and then, you know, whatever you want to say for your subsection. You can also have four hashtags, five hashtags, and six hashtags, and the text for uh, the subsections will be smaller the more hashtags you have. Generally not a good idea to go more than about four hashtags down. Regular paragraphs, you just type in the regular way as if you were typing in any text editor. A few extra tips. If you want the um, if you want a word to show up boldface, you can surround it with a uh, two asterisk on either side. No spaces between the asterisk and the beginning of the word. No spaces between the end of the word and the asterisks. A couple of other things that you can add, do. Uh, if you want italics, then just one asterisk. That'll be italicized when the document is knit up. There we go, there's the asterisk. Uh, if you would like to have uh, some sort of a list, for example, a bullet item list, then you could go like this. Here's a list. Uh, star and then a space. Get up. Uh, drink coffee. Uh, log on to our studio. That's going to become a bulleted list. If you'd like a numbered list, then you can just put numbers. One, get up. One, drink coffee. One, uh, log on to our studio. And when that's knit, you'll see that it numbers out as a one, two, three list. You could have a nested list. 
So how about uh, get up? It's the first item. Uh, the second item is drink coffee. And if I'd like to nest a list inside that second item, I just space four times. One, two, three, four. And another star. Strong. Dark. Lots of it. And then down to the next main item. Uh, we're walking instead of logging into our studio. Um, other neat features, uh, you can uh, have what are called block quotes. It's a way of uh, making a slightly larger size text that is more obvious. Uh, you just put a greater than sign and then immediately start your block quoted text. This text is going to be set off from the rest. What else can you do? Uh, one nice thing is you can do some very simple math. Um, in this sentence, there is a math equation, um, x squared plus 3 equals 2x minus 7. Um, and you can have displayed math, too. For example, I will display the Pythagorean theorem by using, instead of one dollar sign before and after my math, I'll use two dollar signs. And sometimes as you type, the displayed, uh, the, the way it will render up is shown to you. If you don't want to see so much of it, you can just kind of take it away. Uh, things to watch out for is that if you want a paragraph, you need to have a blank line before the paragraph and a blank line after. So like this is a paragraph. This is a paragraph. And I continue the paragraph. So we'll see what uh, the effect of this is, but this is going to be one separate paragraph where here, both of these are going to come together to be one paragraph. So just going to a new line does not make a new paragraph. Let's go ahead and knit this up and see how it looks. I'll pop it up big so you can see right away. Let's head down to the bottom. And you'll see how nicely we got our italicized text. We got our bullet list. We got our numbered list. We had one, one, one. This comes out one, two, three. So the numbering is automatic. We have our nested list. Very nicely, the, the list within the second item of our bullet list. Here's how block quotes look for the styling in this particular R markdown document. There's our inline math equation, and here's our displayed math equation. And as you can see, we got a separate paragraph in our first attempt. In the second attempt, I did not have two paragraphs. I needed blank lines between them if I want separate paragraphs. So that's just the barest of introductions and in how to make an R Markdown document. There's a whole lot more you can learn to make them really fancy and uh, and, and you, can, you can communicate in a wide variety of ways. Uh, little suggestions. You can click on Help, and you can get a Markdown Quick Reference that shows up here in uh, the Help tab. You can also go for Cheat Sheets and go online to look at an R Markdown Cheat Sheet. So that just downloaded. That's very nice. You can also, if you wish, um, get an R Markdown reference guide as well. You can also just uh, go online. If you were to Google R Markdown, 
then you would probably be taken first to this site, rmarkdown.rstudio.com, which has a great getting started guide. It has a gallery of examples, uh, articles on how to make all the different kinds of our markdown book, uh, of our markdown uh, products that there are. Uh, you can write an entire book in our markdown. There's really very little limit to what you can do. Plus, there's a, a whole book online written about our markdown if you follow this link. So if you get into it, there's a lot uh, more things you can do. Uh, slides, books, interactive documents. It's an endless world, a way of uh, communicating with your computer programming. That's all for now. We'll talk a little bit more about our markdown documents and the way you can use them in a couple of subsequent screencasts.